Hello, all of you. I hope you all are keeping safe. I'm here to have a word with you in regards to the environment day theme today, that is ecosystem restoration. I hope it is going to help you in your revision about this particular topic, which is very important for general studies and optional. So let us get on to this study. We started celebrating it on 5th of June because it is the first day of UN Conference on Human Environment, uh, 1972, that is much popularly called as Stockholm Conference. Added to it, when we take the reference of Environment Day, it is ecosystem restoration that is the theme that we are having. And it is all to do with the fact that we are actually right now in the decade of uh, UN ecosystem restoration. So we all are aware of ecosystem distresses and etc. But when it comes on to answer writing or solving out the question, there are a few of the very important things that can be highlighted, whether it is in the global perspective or it is in Indian perspective. So in order to just give you a warming up effect, if I take types of ecosystem, we essentially classify them as aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem. And we all are aware of the fact that both these categories of ecosystems are in immense pressure due to unsustainable human usage. But ultimately, what are the causes that are leading to the loss of ecosystem and thus biodiversity? The diagram that I have selected is highlighting biodiversity loss and I can easily replace it with the ecosystem loss or ecosystem decay. Human population have facilitated immense causes. It is called a detrimental spiral that has created pressure on entire range of ecosystem functioning. And it is essentially related to, so please concentrate on the column of causes. It is growth of human population and it is growth in per capita consumption. Because always remember human impact on ecology ecosystem is function of population, effluence, and technology. So it's not just population. You must be aware of carbon footprint. If I take carbon footprint, it is still per capita carbon footprint is largest among the developed countries of the world. And when we talk about the population share, we need to understand that the maximum population concentration is there in the countries like China and India. So it gives me a very clear logic of understanding that when it comes to the uh, impact factor, it is not just with the population, it is also the technology and influence. When you talk about the spiral which is there, uh, combining causes and consequences, I want you to take up the link which is taking us to degradation of ecosystem function and loss of ecosystem services. Provisioning, regulating, cultural and supportive. Once I take these ecosystem services to my highlighting point, I'm actually talking about a massive loss that we humans are suffering. Because once I take ecosystem services loss, we can actually make more awareness about the ecosystem restoration. And to prove my point, I just want to, all of us to integrate it with sustainable development goals. I've selected this image from a United Nations Development Program, the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. Of all the Sustainable Development Goals, it is 16 and 17 that is missing in this diagram. 15 of them is highlighted here. You, it's your choice. Aap koi sabhi ek sustainable development goal pick up karo and then try to justify it with ecosystem services. Let me, for example, pick up no poverty. For me to ensure no poverty, there must be the sustenance of provisioning services. Provisioning services will not just ensure no poverty, it will also ensure zero hunger, sustainable development goal too. If you are increasing human capacity to come over, deprived living, then it is automatically going to have its impact on more feeding population and good health and well-being, sustainable development goal number three will automatically come into forefront. And when I take the good health and well-being, what you need to understand is something that is very prominent in the present perspective. 
going back to what i was trying to say no poverty that is i'm having more resilience in terms of economic purview thus there will be lack of uh, hunger and lack of hunger by default will ensure my well being and good health well being and good health has to do with favorable ecosystem services maintenance or restoration and to prove that point derived from united nations environment program uh, right ups that are called unep frontiers uh, it's it's something which has evolved very strongly as i said in the, uh, the reference of present pandemic increasing zoonosis and the definition is also right highlighted here so diseases transmitted from animals to humans and of of the many factors which are there i can see that it is a resistance that we are incorporating or it is illegal or poorly regulated wildlife trade i'm talking about these two factors if for a minute i avoid them then also please try to take this unsustainable course of human action labeling them as number one deforestation number two change of the climate and number 3 intensified agriculture and livestock production these all are proving to be sufficiently unsustainable so the blow is multiple it's not just a land ecosystem or aquatic ecosystem is getting degraded it is not just that there is change in climate and thus vulnerability of agriculture scarcity of water sources and multiplying magnitude of hazards that we are dealing under so i think i have made you understand that we can relate it to the fulfillment of sustainable development goal we can identify it with a new evolving and a very strongly evolving component of zoonosis so after understanding the multiple impact that humans are suffering and are going to have a magnified suffering in the likely future and when i talk about ecosystem restoration or ecological re- restoration the general model that we are following incorporate these three steps environmental repair model it incorporates united nations environment program plus united nations development program so i have got three steps related to it mitigation rehabilitation and restoration and what is very important thing that you can take up into account you know, commonly talked about terms and the explanation is also written in this pyramidal diagram so it can make sense but what i want to insist is this indigenous reference ecosystem it is tek traditional ecological knowledge because when we talk about ecological or ecosystem restoration tek comes out as the most practically feasible component traditional forest dwellers farmers the people who are right there associated with the grassroots they are providing us the most practical edge of restoring model now if i have to take the things further i'll easily pick up indian perspective to our study and as it is written in front of you when i talk about indian perspective this abc that uh, we have taken in front of us are excellent example of ecological challenges that india is right now lead, dealing under and these ecological challenges have easily been taken up with the recent example of two back to back super cyclonic surges that we have experienced in the west and the east coast of our country here you can highlight that but the problem do not stop here and i just want to label it as d because i want to continue with it uh, when we take the reference of uh, offering livelihood opportunity because do remember that when we talk about the indian perspective of challenges the most significant constituent that evolves into the socio economic category is ensuring livelihood opportunity covid 19 has given us the understanding of how vulnerable major size of indian population is specifically the migrant workers uh, who have been reeling under the most uncertain scenario and that is a very grave challenge that country like india is reeling under so is india taking to her stride the ecosystem restoration we are always a front runner when it comes on to ecosystem or environment management if you just try to give few minutes to this infographics you can easily understand that ecosystem restoration is not out of box thought it is something that is part and parcel of holistic ecological environmental socio economic development and once we start developing that approach 
it automatically will start yielding fruitful results i just want you to focus on national eco ecological policies and national socio economic policies and any example doubling farmers income granting rural job housing for all pradhan mantri awas yojana shahari gramin rural tourism swadesh darshan if you try to take up that and you combine it with the national ecological policy which talks about a forestation policy forest conservation biofuel policy just two days back we had the mobilization of ethanol policy for the clean ganga national water mission atal bhujal yojana i keep on that i cannot generate climate resilient society i cannot create a climate resilient political economic setup if i am approaching ecosystem restoration as something which is aloof from mainstream of growth or planning that any country can follow this is my perspective of looking at environment day and understanding it in much holistic and integrated manner i hope this perspective that i take to such type of topics is going to further clarify the way you should also approach it or at least integrate it for a better and more comprehensive approach of any sort of answering whether it is selecting the appropriate answer in the multiple choice question or writing the answer bye bye from my side